So this afternoon I want to address a very specific question and it was um, asked of me from a friend from Guatemala and um, it is what is the unforgivable sin and how do we know if we've committed the unforgivable sin? <laughs> so you know it's amazing how this bothers so many people how so it's from Matthew uh, 12 31 it's a issue that seems to torment people and people seem to think that they've often committed the unforgivable sin now I want to just say if right in the beginning you know this is addressing this specific um, sin this specific uh, torment that the devil comes and torments people with and we want to be free from this so I want to say if you are questioning have I committed the unforgivable sin the 99.9% .9 chance is, is you've never committed the unforgivable sin because those who have committed it firstly are not concerned about committing it um, and I'm going to show you that just now but I would, you can read Matthew 12 and the context um, it's how Jesus was performing signs and wonders and miracles and how the Pharisees came and started blaspheming the Holy Spirit. In other words, they started speaking badly about the Holy Spirit. So one of the deceptions that Satan loves to do, okay, is he loves to take the scriptures and twist them and use them to condemn us. And we, and we know that uh, um, he did that even with Jesus. When Jesus was um, moved out into the desert under the power of the Holy Spirit, the devil came and quoted scriptures at him and twisted them very subtly. And he started to use them against um, Jesus himself. And right in the, originally in the Garden of Eden with the fall of Adam and Eve, it was again the, the devil taking what God had said and twisting it very subtly so that it brought doubt and condemnation and ultimately led them into sin because they started doubting the goodness of God. So I want to just say to you today, understand that the devil loves quoting scripture and twisting it to condemn us and accuse us. So many people, you know, ask, oh, I used to believe and then I backslid or I sinned or I got angry with God or I found myself going through a period of unbelief or I, I really battled with the Holy Spirit when I saw some of the stuff the Holy Spirit was doing. I used to battle with this. And I want to just say to you, that is not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Okay, Blasphemy from the, uh, uh, against the Holy Spirit was something very specific. And it was something done by a very specific group of people. And we're going we're gonna to look at that. We're going to look at actually what was the context. What was... What was it that Jesus was specifically addressing when he said, if you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, you can't be forgiven. And I want to just say, I do not believe that scriptures teach that you can blaspheme the Holy Spirit if you are a born-again, spirit-filled Christian. The very fact that you're born again and spirit-filled means that you've invited the Holy Spirit into, into your life, means you've been touched by the Holy Spirit, you, you can't blaspheme or speak badly and slander the Holy Spirit because you have the Holy Spirit in you. It's, a, it's an impossibility. So Romans 8, 1 says, well, there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So the unforgivable sin where Jesus said this sin of blaspheming the Holy Spirit, he was talking about something that brought condemnation. In other words, guilt and death. You've been condemned to death. Romans 8 1 says for everybody who is born again of the spirit that lives according to the spirit of life that's you and me if you're born again we cannot be condemned okay so make that let's make that clear there's a progressive revelation in scripture and the revelation of the gospel of grace is that we cannot be condemned we are not condemned to death for our sins so what was the sin that Jesus was talking about and what was the context in which he was talking about it? So firstly, let's, let's, if we have a look at that scripture in Matthew 12, Jesus was performing signs and wonders. He had been baptized. Remember, Jesus had laid aside his divinity. 
as it says in Philippians chapter 2, he laid aside his divine nature and he became fully man, born of a virgin. And his ministry did not start until he had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, see, he's the example for us. We, we all need to be baptized like Jesus in the Holy Spirit. Jesus did not operate out of his divinity, even though he was divine, even though he was God. He waited until he was baptized of the Holy Spirit. When he was 30 years of age, the Holy Spirit came upon him in his baptism and remained on him. It was from then that he started to perform signs and wonders. So he performed signs and wonders and miracles. He raised the dead. He healed the sick. He cast out demons because he had the same Holy Spirit as we have. He was empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that is what the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the days, did not like. There was a jealousy. They did not like the fact that Jesus was performing miracles. They looked at him and they, and, and they were like astounded. It says they were astounded. Even the Pharisees were astounded by the miracles Jesus did, but they didn't like it. it it's like amazing. It's mind boggling. They were these Pharisees, by the way, the Pharisees were a specific group of people. They were Jewish uh, teachers, um, highly educated in the law of Moses. And they were the religious leaders of the day. They, they operated on a very religious spirit. Okay, they didn't operate under the grace of God. They un operated under the law of Moses. And they were like very, very legalistic, very self-righteous. And unlike Abraham, by the way, who preceded them, who was a man who lived by faith, the Pharisees were disciples of Moses. And they thought they knew it all. They were very religious. They were very self-righteous. They were very judgmental of other people. And they went around judging and they guess what? They even judged the Messiah. So they, they were supposedly waiting for the Messiah, the Savior. Okay, the Savior that had been promised throughout the scriptures. And they knew the scriptures backward. They knew what the Messiah was going to look like. They knew the signs and the prophecies that the Messiah would fulfill. And actually, they knew. If you study the scriptures, uh, the, the New Testament carefully, you realize they actually knew that Jesus was the Messiah. But they rejected him. Because he was not going to establish an earthly kingdom, but a spiritual kingdom. And they were not going to be leaders in that spiritual kingdom. So they rejected the kingdom of God. And they said, what about the kingdom of Israel? And we, we are the leaders of Israel. And yet you, you perform in signs and wonders and you herald it in a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. And, we, and we're not going to be leaders in that kingdom. We want Israel. We want a physical kingdom on the earth. And they rejected Jesus as the Messiah, even though they knew he was performed in signs and wonders by the Holy Spirit. So we see the context was Jesus went around on the Sabbath, which was actually a, a Saturday, which was a holy day. that was supposed to be the day of rest. And he started performing signs and wonders. He healed the man with a shriveled arm. He healed a deaf uh, and dumb man. And he even cast out demons. He did amazing things, good things. And straight away, the Pharisees, they didn't look at the good things that he was doing under the, under the power of the Holy Spirit. Instead, he said, he's breaking religious laws. See, they were more concerned with the law than they were with the Spirit of God. They missed the Spirit of God. So this, this issue of legalism, of putting law before the Spirit is a very dangerous thing to enter into. And sadly, some people mm, may be considered to be doing that today in the church, where they could be highly legalistic and they reject the things of the Spirit. So what they did is they rejected Jesus. But not only that, the blasphemy was that they said the Spirit that Jesus was performing these signs and wonders by was a demon. So they actually knew Jesus. I, I, but the blasphemy is this. It's when you know that Jesus is the Messiah, he's the Savior, but you still choose to reject him and you actually start calling the, the Spirit by the Holy Spirit something evil. You're calling good evil and evil good. And, it, and it's, a very, uh, it's a very dangerous place to be. In fact, it was, it was prophesied in, in the book of Isaiah. It said, there's a, Isaiah 520, it says, Woe to those who call good evil and evil good. And what, and what these Pharisees were doing is they were saying, 
actually they knew Jesus was a uh, was a Messiah. They knew he'd been baptized by the Holy Spirit because John the Baptist gave evidence of that. And the, every, all Israel saw it happen. And they said, we don't care. This spirit of God, they judged God, the Holy Spirit. And they said, that's a demon. And that is very dangerous ground. You see, and they knowingly did it because they wanted to maintain their place of favor with the Roman authorities, with the Jewish authorities. They wanted to, to maintain their worldly position. They did not want to give up their worldly position and acknowledge Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So it's not just a rejection of Jesus. It was that they actually knew the Holy Spirit was working and they chose to publicly say this is a demon by which Jesus is working. And that it was the blasphemy. That was the sin. And Jesus said, you know what? He said, you can, you can call me names. You can do what you like. But when you start calling the Spirit of God a demon, that is an unforgivable sin. And the reason it was unforgivable is because they were under the law. Okay, so please hear me clearly here. These people that Jesus was addressing, they were not under the new covenant of God's grace. This was before the cross. You know, the new covenant started when Jesus died for our sins and rose from the dead. That was the beginning of the new covenant. These people, even though Jesus is in the gospels, it was pre the cross they were still under the law. He was people speaking to people under the law. And I remind you, in the book of Numbers, verse chapter 16, there's a very similar incident where Moses, this man of God, the, the great prophet of God on which the Holy Spirit was moving, Numbers 11 says the Spirit of God was on Moses. All of Israel saw him part the Red Sea. They saw him performing signs and wonders and miracles. They knew that Moses was operating by the Spirit of God. And then it says these guys called Korah and, and I think it was Daneth rebelled against Moses. They said, we don't care what spirit you're operating under. We want worldly position. And it actually says, because they were under the law, it says that the earth opened up and they were consumed. See, they, they, because they were under the law, the wages of sin is death. Okay, the good news is we are not under that law. Because we are in grace. So the wages of our sin is taken now on Jesus. We are not under the law, we're under grace. Romans 6, 14. We are not, sin shall not master us, for we are not under the law, we're under grace. So let me just say, under the law, these guys blaspheme the Holy Spirit and they deserve death. It's unforgivable under the law. You are not a Pharisee. You are not under the law. That is a different covenant. Okay, so, the, so Jesus was speaking to a specific people at a specific time. And by the way, just so you know, Jesus was very condemnatory of these Pharisees. He made it very clear. Woe to the Pharisees. Matthew 23, you can read it. The only people that Jesus ever condemned was not sinners, was not prostitutes, was not adulterers. The only people Jesus condemned were the Pharisees were these people that he knew were blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. Some of them believed, but most of them didn't, didn't believe. Most of them rejected him as Messiah, even though they actually knew in their hearts that he was. So woe to the Pharisees, you teachers of the Lord, you brood of vipers, you snakes. This is what he calls them. He calls them snakes. He says, your father is Satan. So you've got to understand, like Jesus was talking to a very specific bunch of people that were denying him as Messiah, but the blasphemy was that they were saying the Holy Spirit, who was performing amazingly good works in signs and wonders, raising dead, healing the sick, healing shriveled arms. They said, this is, this is a demon. Chances of you ever having done that are very, very remote because you are the fact that even watching this video means that you love God, means that you're concerned about salvation, concerned about your future with God. So I just want to pray a prayer right now in the name of Jesus. I want to just break. I want to break every lie, every deceiving spirit that's coming to you and say, hey, once in your life you blasphemed 
the Holy Spirit. Once in your life you, you committed the unpardonable sin. That is a lie and you spirit of lies. I bind you. I cast you down in the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare freedom from this deception. I declare we are not under the law of sin and death. Romans 8.1 says we are under the law of the spirit of life. And the fact that we are born again. The fact that we are moved by the spirit of God. That the spirit of God dwells in us. Means that we have be, been forgiven. God has forgiven all our sins. We are under that new covenant. Okay, Hebrews 10 verse 17. Our sins are not accounted to us anymore. They are forgiven and we are free from sin. We are free from condemnation. We have accepted the work of the cross. So I want to just say to you today, put, put that any deception or lie aside that you may have blasphemed the Holy Spirit. Know today that the fact that you're even listening to this video, the fact that you are concerned about the Holy Spirit means that you have the Holy Spirit operating in your life, okay? If you've invited the Holy Spirit into your life and be baptized, that's a, a, the seal of God. It is a deposit. He is a depositing guarantee of our salvation, eternal life, and abundant life now. If you've never done that, I want to invite you. If you've never invited, maybe you're listening to this. You know, this week, you know, I've been praying for some people who have been involved in Satanism. Myself, I was involved in the New Age. I used to go around tearing. I, I, before I was saved, I used to hate Christians. I, I hated the work of God. I used to go around tearing down Christian posters. Speaking against Christianity, and actually, when I came to the Lord, I often wondered, "Gee, Lord, did I did I commit the unpardonable sin?" So it was something I struggled with, but it's something I do not struggle with anymore because the Spirit of God is in me, works through me. I've seen amazing signs and wonders. I've I've, I've seen the dead raised, the sick healed, demons upon demons cast out, many many people saved. So that, that lie that was trying to paralyze me and put me into fear was cast aside. And even now, I just cast it aside from your life in the name of Jesus. If you've never accepted Jesus into your life, I invite you to do so now. I say it is the best thing ever that you can do. <laughs> God loves you. Jesus died for you. And all you got to do is get down on your knees and, and, and say, Jesus, come into my life. I, I repent of my sins. I receive your grace and your love. You can do that today. People, if you like these videos, you know, they're not the most professional things out, but let me tell you something. This is life-giving stuff. This is stuff that, that I've fleshed out over many years. If you like them, please share them. Please go to the Scriptures, search the Scriptures, check out what I'm saying. It's very important that you learn the Word of God for yourself. But share these videos. In the right-hand lower corner there's a red button that says subscribe please subscribe to this channel let's get the good news out there jesus is amazing you are righteous because of what he did on the cross you are loved and remember your first love is that god loved you god loved you that's why we are able to love let's get out there share the good news and love on people for surely we live in a time when people need this bless you